Hello, Internet. Welcome to the horrifyingly swift descent into madness. I mean, list of top 10 Tetris variants. Alternates. Tetris. Tetrises. Tetris? It's autism awareness. The next Tetris. This is a great starting point for the franchise, being the first Tetris to truly represent what this fantastic series would become. It was the first Tetris to feature such things as a hold mechanic, allowing you to hold onto that last grip of sanity after you almost put the Z piece where that would turn into a T-spin, you worm. Speaking of T-spins, it also introduced spin moves, or twists as they were called, but instead of giving just extra points, they cause adverse effects. This is cursed. It even invented the hard drop mechanic, sort of. It doesn't immediately lock the piece in place, making it the equivalent of having a high soft drop factor. It also includes some things that were not as good, such as squares. I hate them. Despite how downright awful it is to play, it still holds an important place in history. No matter how interesting the gameplay may be, asterisk, we need to talk about the themes. The new Tetris feels like a continuation of the other Tetris games from the time. Unlike most modern and old versions of Tetris, this game is rendered off-center in the frame, in front of many bizarre locations, all rendered in real time, which was really impressive for an N64 to do. And, in fact, if you were so inclined to look at the game's code and find out how the developer programmed this, you would find this rant from main developer David, martial artist Pretty. This section has been omitted as I recorded it before the release of Odd Header's video top 10 hidden text and video games, and I feel that he does a much better job at discussing it than I would be able to. Like, holy- Immediately after this rant, we see a passage lifted directly from Cold Cut and Strictly Kev, Stoned Chilled Groove, about the way we are all connected in one land of spiritual significance. And I feel that this is emblematic of the trend that we saw during this time, that Tetris isn't just its own little puzzle game, but something intrinsic to human nature. Speaking of Tetris Effect, Tetris World. This game is almost as horrifying as the whole new Tetris situation, but that's what gives it its iconic look. It was the first Tetris game published by THQ, and it really shows in just how unique it is. The game is again a psychedelic psychological horror game, and it was the first Tetris in my research to have a real story mode. Sort of. There's no win condition? How does it even count as a story mode if there's no credits? The gameplay is the first true iteration of modern Tetris. T-spins exist now, but depending on the game mode, they either do the new Tetris thing or they don't even send garbage lines. The story is nothing to write home about, being concealed exclusively in the manual. That's some 1980s type beat. There are five game modes, on the console version at least, Tetris, Sticky, Fusion, Hotline, Square, and Cascade. The story mode takes you through each of these in a variety of worlds. Normal is iconic and where most of the game's progression lies, with T-spins now being like, normal. Why can't you be normal? Sticky is the equivalent of listening to everything at the end of time, where everything falls apart and attempts to understand are punished. Gravity exists, but only when you think it won't, and it is quite possibly the most upsetting thing I have ever played in my life. Fusion Tetris is horrifying because it details the Chernobyl disaster in real time. Hotline Tetris is actually kind of interesting. You have to clear specifically the lines indicated, and this creates an interesting dynamic where you're always one mistake away from death. It's a wonderful risk reward system. If you care about actually doing well, wait, this is the wrong hotline. Squares know their f***ing place, and Cascade Tetris, like, Tetris, but I don't understand it? The story mode which you encounter these game modes in details these freakish beings called Minos, who are going to die as their sun goes supernova so that you, the omnipotent being, can have an excuse to see all of their different cultures and traditions be wiped away at the inevitable end of time. Despite its bleak tone, we can understand that it's supposed to have a happy ending, with the Minos escaping and working together, the unity of sentient beings. Speaking of Tetris effect, Tetris Ultimate. Tetris Ultimate is bad. It's the only official Tetris game I've seen that actually allows you to change your handling. And that should tell you all you need to know. This release is a 30th anniversary version of Tetris, and it was good for what it was, and if what it was wasn't inspired at all, every platform this game was released on already had a better version of Tetris available. This was the least necessary version of Tetris since Tetris, the Grand Master 3, Terror Instinct. This version of Tetris was published by Ubisoft, and as such is the only one where sexual harassment, where it's very clearly soulless. Just like the Ubisoft executives, the game takes place in an abstract nightmare. With unsettling music as the main menu theme, it feels as though this is the final Tetris, the end of time, and that could be intentional because this is the 30th anniversary, but it's also so conceited. The game was just a bad work of art. The emotions that it was trying to elicit failed. The terror present is nothing more than not being able to recognize that the vast emptiness that comes with 30th anniversary is just another game with a fraction of the depth and power that came from the previous entries. When I play it, I find it hard to do anything but put it down immediately. It fills me with such a sense of dread. But then again, that could be the point. 
Tetris isn't just a fun game, it could be used to create more powerful emotions than any other property that's been going on for practically 40 years. This game was taken down from all digital stores in 2019, not because of a new version of Tetris or because of a privacy shattering bug, but simply because Ubisoft couldn't be bothered to renew the license. That's it. I can't tell whether to laugh or cry, but at least it was taken down after Tetris Effect. Tetris PSP. Tetris PSP is a game that doesn't exist anymore. You can't buy it. EA took it down after the release of Ultimate. Let the revolution begin. It's such a shame you can't play it anymore. That's right, it is literally impossible to play this game. There is no way that you can play this game anymore because EA said so, and I definitely respect their authority. How did this get on my computer? <laughs> I guess there's nothing to be done about it then. This game has one main mode. That is standard line clearing, and it's fantastic. All the mechanics are here and in full force, but no one plays Tetris for the standard line clearing. They play each separate version for the progression. So how do you get that nice bar to be solid blue? Variants are all versions of Tetris, but worse, but still fun, somehow. The main reason this game is worth considering is because of how these variants relate to the rest of the entries in the series, not to mention the emotional experience of playing this game. Remember all the Tetris games in the last decade being set in locations? The abstraction of the Tetraminos invading on the natural landscapes as a way of telling the story of our humanity? Well, this game just said <coughs> that because it exists in an endless void, which would be terrifying in other games, but here it just works, a flat out denial of the illusion that this was for anything other than your hedonistic enjoyment of watching number go up. That's what all the other variants are all about. The variants are each unique enough that learning how they work is about as difficult as it would be to learn a new AC setup, and then it pulls the rug out from under you by having variants that are hardly variant at all. Gravity is just Cascade from the aforementioned Sinners, Ledges is the precursor to that one game mode in Tetris DS, and Radical is just Tetris Effect Tetris DS. Tetris DS is one of the most influential, being the first real game to feature the rules from the Tetris guidelines. Unlike the previous games on this list, it isn't disturbing, it's just so comfy, and I feel like it's worth understanding why that's the case, and we should use this as a case study for why so many other Tetris games feel so apocalyptic. Tetris DS is the most pure version of Tetris, with each game mode bringing more visions of nostalgia, it feels like a swan song of Nintendo's relationship with the Tetris brand. The standard mode has Mario 1 footage on the top screen, which moves along with the player, and it's just so great. The mission mode is Zelda themed, and annoying. The other game modes exist, allegedly. This game is unlike the others on the list because its theme isn't about anything other than the pure joy of the childhood that most people playing this game at the time might have had. This is probably the best Tetris game to be released for a purely mobile console. And that's more of the themes. Instead of running on a behemoth, it runs on this little thing. The game is about progress and how, despite it all, Tetris is still the same and will never abandon you. This was the first Tetris to have an online mode, which could even be considered playable, likely starting off the entire multiplayer scene of today. It's all about the universal experience that connects people together. Speaking of Tetris Effect, Tetris 99. We're getting into the really good ones now. Tetris 99 is the most recent official entry in the Tetris franchise, and I might not mind if it was the last because this has one thing that the others don't. Replayability. There's always a way to get more points, but never a way to get more stuff. After 100% completion, the game gets bland. You could always find a faster time in Sprint, but there will always be a skill cap from the game's handling. There isn't a skill cap in Tetris 99. The skill comes from defeating other people. There is no other motivation. I've played this game for 60 hours and I'm only level 42. There are people walking around at 90. Starred. That's at least 200 hours in a free video game. That's unheard of. It's the equivalent of uh, drugs. I've only won four times and those were some of the best victories of my life, but it took 60 hours. On just Tetris 99, I have hundreds of hours on other versions, which will be very shocking to most of you, I imagine. The game which I would have the most hours in would be Tetris Effect. Poyo Poyo Tetris 2. This, right here, is the quintessential Tetris game that almost didn't make it on the list. The game has a frankly unparalleled style and vibe that it almost feels like something that came from a different planet. There are tons of game modes, adventure, solo, online, that's it, and that can be it. Solo includes a bunch of worthless Poyo modes and there we go. If Poyo Poyo Tetris 2 has one issue, it's, it's much more Poyo Poyo than Tetris, to the point where the most iconic Tetris mode is buried under four submenus. That being said, uh, who cares? No one is playing this game because of its great atmosphere. They're playing it because of its inclusion of such great characters as Patricia Tax on Gender Swap, character that was so obviously designed to sell merchandise to children that it's kind of insulting, character that was so obviously designed to sell merchandise to children that it's kind of insulting, part two, and Schizo. Cyan, I'll be on top of this soon enough. I'll even be on top of you, too. 
The credits only acknowledge the Japanese voice cast, which seems kind of illegal, but I also love it in some juvenile way. I'd love to go fully into the story and themes of this game at a later date, but until then, I suppose just discussing the highlights will have to suffice. I is uh, literally Patricia Taxon. That's it. I don't... Ultimately, I feel like I won't be happy as long as neurotypical people are able to recognize me as being the same species as them, so... Uh, there's a side quest in one of the later parts of the game, which I'm sure is a reference to some other Puyo Puyo game, but I have not played that because it's only in Japan. But there is one very important part of this quest. What do I do with all this love? I can't just leave it trapped inside me. It has to be free! Let's express our love for each other! I love you, Mom! A day without lesbians is like a day without sunshine. For real though, this game is very clearly not designed for Tetris players. But despite that, this is the only modern Tetris game with a normal no gimmicks 1v1 online game mode, and it's kind of sad how other modern Tetris games don't have that. Speaking of Tetris effect, Jaystris. Jaystris is probably most famous because one time Code Bullet cheated on it. That's it. He just made a bot designed for cheating in an online ranked game and expected people to be on his side with that. Like. What was his plan? It's also rather famous for having one gimmick that none of these other games have. Nothing. No gimmick, I lied. A black void with nothing but your stats, a matrix with solid color blocks, and no background. It's kind of the best kind of fourth wall break. It was constructed without one. Game modes aren't found in submenus behind submenus, they're on a list, the kind you would see on Amazon. So if literally everything about every other version is dead and buried, why does anyone care about it? I mean, how good could the gameplay feel if there literally isn't any effects? Other Tetris have tactile feedback, satisfying sound effects, and then this one just strolls in and only acknowledges your Tetris with a- Why is this so powerful? Well, it's fast for one. The most fast. You have full control over your handling in this one, but unlike Tetris Ultimate, you can actually go fast. The game is no longer a limitation. This endless void only acknowledges your existence and nothing else's, and only exists to express the emotion of complete control. Everything is dedicated to making sure the player's inputs are recognized and nothing else. And it might be the most rewarding Tetris game ever released. There is no moment where the game didn't recognize your inputs, only moments where you weren't good enough, which inspires you to keep playing, whenever possible. Every game mode is only focused on your personal improvement. There's a quick play lobby just called Live, Sprint and Ultra here obviously, but what is Downstack? It's just maps that you have to clear efficiently. Survival is a constant bombardment of non-consecutive garbage, letting you practice your downstacking capabilities in a more methodical way. 20 TSD is just a practice mode where you get good at Tsman doubles. I... I've never cleared it. PC mode is testing how many PC setups you know. I know none. I think the best way of looking at Jaystress is a practice tool. This game is only playable in your browser, enabling you to hone your skills wherever you have a functioning Wi-Fi and keyboard. But despite its technical prowess, I find it rather lackluster as a work of art because of how it is so empty. Like, it's trying to say something, and it's doing it well, that's why it's one of the greatest games of all time, but it just doesn't really hit home for a basic Tetris player like me. If only there were something greater. Speaking of Tetris effect. Honorable mentions. Tetris NES and Tetris DX and also, Tetris Slash for the Xbox 360. I don't have any way of playing this game because all my Xbox 360s are trapped in my wall. Tetris Effect. Where do I even begin? The Konami Code. In the 80s, arcade games were all the rage. But these games were designed to suck quarters, and when they migrated into the home, they had the same philosophy. Games were so difficult for gamers and developers that developers had to institute systems to make making the games easier. Konami used the same code for each of their games, and over the coming decades it became the most recognized code in the world. In Tetris Effect, you have to plug in a controller to use the Konami code on the start menu to open a terminal. Input June 6, 1984, using a keyboard, and you unlock a secret theme. It's the original Tetris by Alexei Pajitnov on his rusty old work computer. This is Tetris Effect's thesis statement, a celebration of progress and collaboration. The journey mode it takes us from the primordial soup to the desert to space and ends with a gauntlet. The final level is such a steep difficulty spikes that most people just give up. The song that plays is titled Metamorphosis and flashes different snippets from all the memories you've made up to this point. The effect modes are each unique and powerful. The classics, the emotions, the training tools, and the adventurous modes all further this idea. Sprint is located at an international space station, Ultra on the Gilded Horizon, and Marathon in Alexi's Void. Combo, AC, and Target are all in the Mandala, and Adventure 
During the weekends, there are rituals. Everyone plays the same mode, together. You can see everyone else's avatar and everyone else's contribution, and after the weekly goal is met by everyone taking time out of their day, another secret mode is unlocked. 1989, the very first public release of Tetris on an arcade in Russia. Then there's the multiplayer. A dark moon surrounds everything. If you fly into the dark sphere in the center of the multiplayer arena, you find all the ghosts of the players with the highest skill rating. And the main multiplayer mode is literally called Connected. Every part of the entire game is truly dedicated to furthering human connection. You are never alone. There are people who love you, who love the same things as you, who will always be by your side, even if you've never met. But it also uses star signs as a way of expressing that, so um, I rescind all my previous praises. Number one, Tetrio. That's right, I lied to you. Tetris Effect is not number one, but you probably guessed that based on the fact that there have only been nine games on the list so far. So remember the whole thing in Tetris Effect was that humans were all one big connected race and the human connection is the bestest thing in the world? Tetrio is like that, but actually focuses on the connection part rather than the appearance of it. There aren't any NPCs in this one. There are only two solo modes, Sprint and Blitz, but it somehow makes these into a multiplayer activity. Every time you open up the menu to start, the leaderboard is staring you in the face, and after you finish, the tweet button is right there. The leaderboards are at the same level as the settings and the main game modes, and it shows everyone who's live, every record that got broke, every game that reached into the top of the leaderboards, and you. Then there's multiplayer, which is easily the best, like, ever? This is the only game I've ever played ranked. There's a chat function, and not saying good luck, have fun at the start of a match is due to the equivalent of murder. They will destroy you. But by far the greatest part of this game is the quick play. The game is still pretty small, who knows how things will change in the future, but for now there's only one quick play lobby. Because of this, if you're playing at the same time as everyone else, you will see them, no matter what. For instance, Osk sometimes just hops in. He just feels like it, and there's a badge if you manage to KO him. There used to be a mythical figure, the Egg Crusader, who would travel across every game and drop the Discord link for the Egg Cult. <laughs> Quick Play is just great for human connection. I've met so many people through there, like them. So little energy, you just don't expect the same things of me as I'm told that. by my behavioral aids. But in speech therapy, they, they seem so and proud of me. They gave me free comic books and sweets from my incentive yesterday. We'd lie together every afternoon. Of course I talk a lot more now, a lot about myself, but what? you know you can do that too. A drift and see. We rest sure. upon each other's coats. I, I feel a lot of things, but you for this I feel the most. Out of her mouth. I'm not supposed to say Ooh. I love you, but it sounds kind of weird well, when I say I like you too. Right? Could I take this opportunity to be honest for once? I'm not supposed to say I need you, but it sounds kind of weird when I say I want you to. Cheer up! But it's hard! And would you be clear if we never met? What? Let's say you move in this one. We have to split up in the end. Would you have chosen not to meet us? We wouldn't have to go through this thing? No! Not at all! We had so many fun and exciting adventures together! I love you, but it sounds kind of weird when I say I like you too. I'm not supposed to say I need you, but it sounds kind of weird when I say I want you too.
you might know her as uh, the main guy's wife in No Country for Old Men. Uh, she was brave in Brave, uh, and she was the victim of cancel culture in that one Black Mirror episode. Um, she, it's it's not like this is the first one where. <laughs> 